see in the bulletin today, uh, today's lesson of the hour will be coming from Acts chapter 16. So if you want to go ahead and be getting your Bibles and turn into Acts chapter 16. And we're going to be starting somewhere around verse 16. And I promise you we'll be going as far as the Holy Spirit wants me to go. So that might be a few minutes, and that might be 30 minutes, that might be an hour. But we're going to go as the Holy Spirit sees fit today. And before I get into today's lesson, I'm going to stop right quick and say a very, very gracious thank you to my church family here at Ogden Community Church, to my youth that came and took a part of the back to school bash. Uh, it really lifted my spirits to see y'all out there laughing, running, playing, and competing as well. It's very important that we do compete some. But the fellowship that was had yesterday, uh, I hope I'm not the only one that enjoyed that. I hope y'all enjoyed that. And, and once again, like today, we did our pennies from heaven, and that was a big part of it. So uh, thank you to our OG Community Church family. Y'all are so, always so gracious, and you are so appreciated. And uh, I was studying this the other day, and uh, it just dawned on me that this is a lesson that, you know, that the Holy Spirit really needs me to get out today. And... And it has a lot to do with several different things today. But today, the Spirit said, you really need to talk about this in the demonstration of obedience and faith. Faith and works. And, and that's uh, where the Holy Spirit's kind of leading me today because you got to have faith and works. you got to have them both together. But the faith that Paul and Silas here in Philippi, uh, they, they show in the actions that happen in this part of this chapter is unbelievable. Amen. And the situation that they were placed in. And, and it's really, really sad to know that they was put in this situation over something that is kind of taking the forefront in today's time as well. Things that are being done of the darkness to get monetary gain. You know, money and the lust of thereof is the root of all evil. And, and we're going to see here that it went to the point so far that they threw old Paul and Silas in prison. And we'll read that in the scripture here later. But it just makes me just cringe to think the, to know that Paul and Silas was out doing the work of the Lord. Doing things that they were commanded to do. And yet, they were persecuted. And, and we're going to read that in the scripture here. I'm not going to give it away just yet. But we're going to take a look at that. And we're going to go ahead and start with verse 16 right now. And, and this is after Paul and Silas had been, been at Lydia's. And, and it came to pass... As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Mm -hmm. Now, what is soothsaying? It, yes, fortune telling. Telling people what they wanted to hear so they could make gain off of that. It's telling your fortune. So, we see here that she was... Uh, she was possessed by a spirit there. And yes, that's one of the spirits that you can be possessed by. And the enemy can use that as a way to get to people that are Christians. In the uh, Sue saying, telling your fortune, it's going to take a, make a Christian if the right one comes to the soothsayer. And it goes to that soothsayer and then that soothsayer tells them what's going to be and it comes to pass. Yes, an evil spirit can do that. It can lead you in that direction. And it comes to pass, isn't that not going to take that Christian and make them 
move away from the true word of God? It sure will. It really will. But we see here that their masters were making gain off that. They were making money off that. Off this poor individual that was possessed by an evil spirit. These folks were making money off that. How in the world do you do that? I'll tell you one way how you do that. You're not a God. Because if they were a God, they would have realized real quick that they were possessed by an evil spirit. Verse 17. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, I'm going to tell you about old Paul right here. Before he was Paul, he was known as Saul. We all know that story. And, and I want y'all to remember in Acts, I think it's Acts chapter 8, I think, of God striking him down. But what was he doing when God struck him down and blinded him? He was on his road, way to the road to Damascus to do what? To persecute the church. And I'll tell you right now, old Saul back then, he was about his business, even though it was wrong. He was about his business. And that was doing what they, that he was commanded to do by the quote unquote religious people. See where I'm going with this? Quote unquote religious people. But he was about his business. He thought he was doing the right thing. But he was being read, led in the wrong direction by those that called themselves a Christian. He was being led in the wrong direction. But the fervent attempt to do what he was commanded to do, he also, when he got changed and turned, when he turned to Christ and his name become Paul, the fervent attempt that he had to spread the word of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying here? He had faith. And he had works. And we're going to find out in the next couple of verses here that he was truly doing the work of God. Alright, so we see here in verse 17 that even this evil spirit come unto Paul and Silas and claimed that they were men of God. And it wanted salvation too. Now I want to stop right there. And, and point out that, you know, some places, all they preach is you've got to believe. you just got to believe. Even the evil spirits believe. And right here is proof of that. Because this is an evil spirit. Used in an evil way. Even the evil spirits believe. And they tremble, too. Good for you. You believe. Because you got to believe. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you ain't got to believe. Because you got to believe. you got to believe. But even even the demons believe. Mm -hmm. And they, even they do tremble. Mm -hmm. So we, we see here that even this evil spirit, this woman possessed with the evil spirit, came to Paul and Silas. And verse 18, And this did she many days. You hear that? She did this many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. See, there's Paul's faith and works put together as one right there. You see what happened. Did you see what that verse said? The evil spirit came out within the same hour. The same hour that evil spirit came out of that woman. Instantly. Instantly. That's what strong faith and works mixed together can do. Yes, because you also seen what Paul said to that evil spirit in the name of what? Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's how powerful that name is. That song we sung today in our worship service, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. There is. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. And that power has been extended to each and every one of you that believe and have faith and do works. Hallelujah. That power is given to you as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. It's not just Paul and Silas and all the other disciples, because you are disciples as well too. Amen. You study from God's Word. You go to Him in prayer. You've accepted Jesus Christ. Guess what? That makes you a disciple. That gives you that power. But what gives you that power is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ gives you that power. Not you. You have that power inside you because guess what? You know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that has the power there. And, and, and in no doubt, Paul did this that way that God may receive the glory through Jesus Christ. That's the reason why that spirit come out within the same iron. He wasn't doing it for himself with old Paul. He wasn't doing it for Paul's glorification. He's doing it for the glorification of Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we see here we have Paul. He done cast this evil spirit out of this woman. Now let's see what the quote unquote masters did when they seen this happen. And when her master saw that hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Did you, did you read that? They brought them in front of the magistrates and told them that they bring trouble to the city. They bring trouble to the city for doing God's work? Are you serious? Are you serious? And, and that reminds me of a story uh, of a certain preacher. I'm not going to name his name, but we all know him and we all love him. And in a church, they had to have a meeting because why? Because this pastor was going to do it God's way. And this religious, supposed to be religious church said you can do it God's way as long as it aligns with our beliefs. Amen. Can you believe that? <laughs> There's no denominations in the church. There's no denominations in the church. There is one church. Amen. And that is the church of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. There ain't but one interpretation and that's an interpretation of the Holy Spirit. Right. All the prophecies and things of this Bible go together for the good. Amen. It's all one thing. It's not separate. Even though Paul says that you shouldn't be of a Paul or a Paulus or any of that, there's no division in God's holy word. It's straightforward right down the line, one thing. And that's God's word. It's not man's word. But you see the masters here, they were in it for the money. They were in it for soothsaying. Because soothsayers can make you feel good. And just because this pastor over this one church kind of stepped on somebody's toes, got reprimanded. That's the same thing that's fixing to happen or has happened to Paul and Silas here because they're doing it God's way, Amen. giving Christ the glory. But guess what? It went against these folks. And, and we're going to see we brought them to the magistrates now. Let's see what happened. To, see what else happened to old Paul and Silas. Uh, they've been brought to the magistrates and said they've been troubling the city, yada, yada, yada. Did you know Paul and Silas was doing what the Jews were supposed to do? It, they were doing what the Jews were supposed to do. But in verse 21, it says, And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to serve, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them. Did you hear that? The multitude. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded 
commanded to beat them. To beat them. Wow. Wow. And when they had laid many, many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. If beat wasn't enough, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who have received such a charge, thrust them into prison, the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks. Now y'all know what stocks are, right? It's a way to mobilize a human from being able to move anywhere. You're stuck there in that one place. But they took them in to the prison after laying many stripes to their backside. I, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of something like that happening, but it's horrible. And then they get put into prison for what? Doing God's work. Glorifying Jesus Christ. I see a lot of that going on today and I'm going to speak against it today. Because it's not God's way. It's not God's way. If someone is up here reading from the Bible, doing it word by word, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, you need to pay attention to the things that are being said. If it steps on your toe, guess what? You might need to pray to God and the Holy Spirit to give you correction a reason why you feel like your stones are getting stepped on. Right. Amen. I'm not stepping on your toes. The Holy Spirit is. Yep. Jimmy ain't stepping on your toes. The Holy Spirit is. That's something we need to take as self-accountability. Yes. But these men here didn't deserve that. They did something good. They cast a demon out in the name of Jesus Christ. They cast a spirit out of this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But yet they had the whip laid to their backside. They've been put in chains and bonds. And here comes this next part of this passage. is the reason why the Holy Spirit wanted to send me here today. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to know. You know being cast in that prison. Paul and Silas was doing God's work. The enemy cast them there. I perceive some today have been cast into prison. Mm -hmm. Have been locked in chains and bonds. And the example we're fixing to get in here to Paul and Silas, I want you to understand if I'm talking to you, this can happen to you as well too. Mm -hmm. I, I love this. And, and the Holy Spirit said, Son, somebody needs to hear this. And I hope they're here today. And I hope they get to watch this video. Because something awesome is fixing to happen in this chapter. Something very awesome is fixing to happen in this chapter. And I want y'all to pay close attention to the next few verses here. Because I'm going to tell you right now, something powerful can happen in your life too. Amen. It can. I know I'm living proof of it. But I'm telling you right now, it can happen in your life too. Amen. Now this next verse, I want you to listen to it. And I want you to listen to it well. And I want y'all to take in fact the example Paul and Silas set right here. I want you to pay attention to everything about this verse. Listen to it. Really listen to it. Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Did you hear that? At midnight, they prayed and sang praise. Did you hear that? They sang praise. Praise. After they done had their backside whooped off of them. Right. After they done been put in chains and stocks. Mm -hmm. And immobilized and locked behind the door. Not knowing what their next moment's going to be like. 
They prayed and sang praise. They sang praise to God. In their moment that they were at their lowest, in trouble, done had the blood beat out of them, they sang praise to God. Amen. Can somebody in here give a praise today? Amen. 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 I don't see nobody in here bleeding today. You should have no problem saying hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They were beat. And at midnight, midnight, they prayed. Yes. And they worshiped. And they sang praise. If you're in that moment where you feel like you're locked down, stop at any hour of the day, especially at midnight. Yes, One, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the evening. Pray and sing praise to God. Amen. You're in stocks and chains and bonds. Guess what? Something's better is coming. Because God gives beauty for ashes. Where there is pain, there is joy. Yes, sir. He's coming to you if you keep faith and work. And part of your working is singing and praying when you're down. When you're in the valley, don't lose faith. Paul and Silas could have very easily lost faith right here. Guess what they did? They did not. They kept faith. They kept praying to the Father. They kept singing praises to God's holy name. Whoo! Can you imagine? I can't imagine. I sure can't. Being beat like that, being chained up, locked down for doing good. For doing good. Let's carry on the scripture right here. And suddenly, and suddenly, there was a great earthquake. A great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened. And everyone's bonds were loosed. Every, do you hear that? All the doors, every one, all and every one. That's not just including Paul and Silas's. Did you hear that? All doors were opened. Everyone's bonds were loosed. Now you're getting the picture. You see what faith and works can do. Did you see that? Not just Paul and Silas's. That would have been amazing in itself. It would. It really would have. But it said, all. Oh, all doors were opened. All bonds were loosed. The faith and works distributed and shown by Paul and Silas freed everybody. Freed everybody. Ain't that amazing how you praying and singing songs of praise even at your lowest you're still thanking God for your blessings and then all of a sudden He frees you and guess what? Through that He's freed somebody else. And what does Scripture say? If the Son sets man free what is He? He's free indeed. Now, now you, just got, you just got to picture this. All the doors were open. All the bonds were loose. They could have got up and left. Because we're going to see why here in a minute. And I also want y'all to pay attention to what they did. Because guess what? In that situation, there was still work to do. Although they'd been set free, there was still work to do. They weren't done yet. And this is the part I love about this scripture as well too. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled. Verse 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm for we are all here. We are all here. See, Paul just got shown a great blessing, a miracle. And his miracles do happen today, so don't doubt that. He got shown a miracle. 
He could have got up and fled the area, but he knew God still had work to do right there. Yes, sir. Now you see the prison guard there, he awoke and he done thought all the prisoners were gone. So what did he do? He was going to draw his sword all out because he knew he was in charge of keeping the prisoners in locks and bonds and keeping them safe there. And him thinking that they were gone, he was going to kill himself. God wasn't done yet. He had another one he needed to say there, and that was the jailer. Paul cried out with a loud voice and with the inspiration of God Almighty, stop that guy. Stop that jailer from killing his son. Now let's read what happens to the jailer. Verse 29, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. 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 You see the work God did there as well? They wasn't finished. Paul had faith in God to know that he still had work to do right there. Now you see what the jailer has done. He has come for salvation. For what? For what? The faith and works Paul and Silas showed in their actions. Amen. When they were in the valley, they were praising God. They were still praying. They were shouting hallelujah, I'm thinking. You know, giving Him all praise. Amen. Count it joy if you fall into divers temptations. Because when you do that, there's a blessing coming. Amen. Now that blessing might not be you directly, but all oh, the blessing of someone being saved. Come on, now. Someone being saved. Mm -hmm. The jailer said, what must I do to be saved? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The beauty of that? Let's see what old Paul said. And Silas said, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of that night, and washed their stripes. You hear that? He washed their stripes. And washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all of his, straightway. Amen. When your ways please the Lord, brothers and sisters, listen to me. When your ways please the Lord, it will make your enemies at peace with you. Amen. It will make your enemies at peace with you. The jailer here was an enemy. He was the one that forced them inside the prison. He had a hand in their persecution. Do you see Paul and Silas' ways pleasing the Lord has brought their enemy to them and made a child of God out of that enemy. Amen. Made that enemy become at peace with Paul and Silas. Amen. Ain't that great? That too can happen to you, brothers and sisters. It can. I've seen it. I've seen it. Amen. I've experienced it. Hallelujah, I've experienced it. But that's what faith being shown through your words can do. Amen. But we also got to look earlier in, in this passage here too. And know Troubles and trials are going to come to you. I want to pose a question to you. Are you going to be like Paul and Silas here? When those trials and temptations and troubles come, are you going to pray and praise your way through it? Or we're going to go back to Numbers, the 14th chapter. The children of Israel man, moaning and complaining and groaning and saying they'd rather be dead, or are you going to be like them? Because we all know the end of them, what happened to them. Amen. 
Or are we going to be praying? Or are we going to be praising? Because guess what? Your mountaintop's coming when you're doing that. You're coming up out of that valley. You're going to notice as you walk that it was two sets of full footsteps. Then you're going to notice one set of footsteps. And that one set of footsteps, you know what that is? That's Jesus Christ carrying you. Amen. What does it say in Matthew, I think it's chapter 11, verse 28? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Amen. And what does our scripture say? And I will what? I will give you rest. When them trials and temptations and them troubles come, brothers and sisters, and you are in the valley, keep faith, keep working, keep praying, keep singing songs of praise to God. Keep on keeping on. Keep fighting the good fight. Because Christ has promised you if you are heavy laden, you are burdened, come unto Him. Come unto Christ. And He will give you rest. What does it say His yoke is? It's easy. His burden is light. Learn of Him, for He is meek and lowly. His yoke is light. Look to His yoke. Put your burdens on Him. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all of your care upon Him. Amen. Why? For He cares. Do you hear me? For God cares. For Christ cares. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. He cares for you. Even when you're in the valley, give to Him. Give Him praise. Because guess what? He's working the work. And somebody might receive salvation through your toils, your downtime, seeing you pray and praise, and then watching you get lifted up as long as you're giving credit to the one that did it. Cast your cares upon Him, brothers and sisters. Let go and let God. Yes, Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? Would you all please bow your heads?